Hello everybody. Today we are here to introduce you to the concept of mycelium and to describe to you its applications in bio-based building. We begin with a brief introduction about the basic characteristics of mycelium before proceeding to mycelial biocomposites and concluding with the applications of mycelium biocomposites in bio-based building. To begin with, we define mycelium as the vegetative lower part of the mushroom or the roots of the mushroom. Mycelium is the structure that provides the necessary nutrition for fungal growth and development. Mycelium is also defined as a network of hyphae, which are white fungal filaments that spread beneath the soil. This is better understood when looking at the following picture. The growing pattern and filamentous structure of mycelium are of particular interest to us, since they allow the living organism to be used for the production of bio-based materials. In fact, mycelium can bind the different natural substrates, for instance, hemp, straw, cellulose and cacao, and many others, to form a mycelium-based biocomposite. A biocomposite is a composed material consisting of a fiber, and a binder. In the case of mycelium composite, the fiber is called substrate and the binder is the mycelium which acts as a glue holding the particles together. Thus the mycelium grows and binds to the substrate, receiving nourishment from the used substrate while gluing it together. An example of mycelium biocomposites can be seen in the following pictures. On the right you can see a close-up of the binding between mycelium and a substrate, while on the left you can see different bricks made from mycelium and raw materials. The process for producing a mycelium-based composite includes the following steps. First, we have the fibers, which need to be sterilized. After that, we inoculate the material with mycelium. This allows the first growing process. After this process, you can either mold the sample and dry it, or heat press the material. We are now going to show you a video in which you can see how a mycelium biocomposite is made.
We have now seen the process, but within the process, we need to consider different variables. First, we have the material ingredients, then the parameters for growth, and finally, we have the processing of the material. The material ingredients consist of the type of mycelium, so the species of mushroom, the type of substrate, and its structure. Different combinations of substrate and mycelium can influence both the growth of the mycelium and final structure of the composite. The mushrooms that we use, such as Ganoderma or oyster mushrooms, are decaying organisms and can break down complex molecules like lignin. For example, when a high content of lignin is present, high mechanical strength and firm structure are observed in the grown biocomposite. So, when you want to make a certain material from mycelium, you need to take care of this multitude of different possibilities to obtain the desired characteristics of your product. When considering the growing conditions, the most relevant parameters for growth are temperature, air humidity and pH. These conditions can slightly vary depending on the type of fungus. However, generally, the most favorable temperature for all fungi is between 25 and 30 degrees Celsius. When considering air humidity, the highest level of growth is obtained at a humidity level between 60 and 90 percent. The pH is generally between 7 and 8, but it varies depending on the mushroom type. When working with microorganisms, the time becomes an important aspect as well. In fact, you need time and patience to let the mycelium do its work. Usually, the period of growth is between one and three weeks. Generally, the biocomposite can undertake different types of processing, among which we find molding, heat pressing and surface treatment. The chosen types of processing determines the final obtained product. When a foam-like product is wanted, then the biocomposite needs to be molded, because the molding of the product will not modify its original characteristics, but it will simply shape the biocomposite. This means there is a large freedom in shaping the material. When a board-like product is desired, then the grown materials can be heat pressed at high temperature and high pressure. Also, a shape can be given to the product by using a mold in the desired form. To finalize the mycelium-based product, a surface treatment can be applied. For example, a coating to make the material more water resistant. We have mentioned all the important variables to be considered in the mycelium-based biocomposites process. All of these variables are important because different properties of the biocomposite are affected by them. For example, the density of the biocomposite depends on the type of substrate used. The thinner the raw material, the denser the final product. However, the growing parameters are essential to the actual growth of the composite. In this case, too low a temperature responds to a latent state of the mycelium and thus to limited growth. As already mentioned, Depending on the type of processing, you will obtain different final products. The applications vary depending on their characteristics. If a board is obtained, the uses can be similar to those of particle board, depending on the type of final product desired. If a foam is obtained, the application can be like thermal and acoustic insulation, but also packaging. There are several companies already producing and marketing mycelium biocomposites. For example, Ecovative, Microworks and Mogu, all offering mycelium products not only as building materials, but also as packaging and design. So, now we've seen what mycelium is and what a mycelium-based composite is, how to grow it and how to process it. The applications of mycelium-based biocomposites were also mentioned, together with the properties needed for the use of each product. We hope we have inspired you and thank, thank you, you for watching. For watching.